Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to use SPICE, a software program that's used to simulate electrical circuits. It's a brilliant way to check your answers for my other videos and it's a free piece of software that's extremely powerful. Um, the version I'm going to be using is called LT SPICE and I suggest you download it from that link shown at the bottom of the screen um, before you watch the rest of the video. So with that, let's get started. During this course, I'm going to be using some simulation software. This software allows you to simulate electrical circuits. The basis of the software is a, a package or a, a sort of tool set called SPICE. And that stands for Simulation Program with Integrated Circuit Emphasis. So there are many, many different versions of SPICE. You'll see P-SPICE, LT-SPICE, and in the lab you'll be using a different version of SPICE as well. The version of SPICE I'm going to use in the lectures is called LT SPICE. And the reason I'll use this particular variation of it is that it's free. So you can easily download it. It's not a very big file. There's no passwords or keys or anything like that you need to um, use to be able to install this. And there's no limits on it. So there's no limits on the number of components or anything like that. So to find LT SPICE and download it for yourself, you can just simply Google LT SPICE Go to the first link here. And download and install. It's available for Mac or PC. And once you've installed it, you get a piece of software that looks like this when you open it up. So I'm going to give a brief tutorial on how we can use it for simple AC and DC circuit analysis. And using this software, you should be able to find the answer to every problem we look at in class. So when you first open LT Spice, you're presented with a page like this and you need to create a new document or a new schematic. So you click this button here at the top left and this brings up our, our basically a piece of paper where you're gonna draw a circuit. So we're gonna begin by drawing a really simple DC circuit. So as you know, circuits, they're gonna need an energy source. So there's some common components here. There's a ground, there's a resistor, there's a capacitor, an inductor, a diode. And then there's this symbol for basically all the other components you'll ever need. So if I click on that, it brings up a new window. And you can see here, there's a list of loads of different things. You probably don't know what most of them are. But if we look in this list, we see voltage. So we can double click that. And that allows me to place a, a voltage source on our schematic. You know, I can place as many as I like but I'm not going to do, I'm just going to have one in this simple circuit. So now I've got a voltage source. Let's set the magnitude of that voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, hover over the symbol and then right click. And it says here, look, DC value. So if I wanted a 10 volt source, I simply write 10 volts there. If I want an ideal source, I don't put any series resistance. If I was trying to model a real source, you know, I could put a one ohm series resistance, but that's not a necessary parameter. So for DC circuits, you need go no further than this. But if you're interested in AC or any other kind of waveform, you have to click advanced. And here you can see we can do pulses, sinusoids, exponentials, all sorts of different shapes. So we'll be looking at that in more detail later. So we'll just click OK for now. Set this as a 10 volt source. And that's done, we know the more positive side of it, we know the magnitude. So let's put a resistor in our circuit. So I've clicked the little resistor symbol. And now I'm gonna right click on it. So hover over and right click and I can set the resistance. So 10 ohms. I could, if I wanted to, click select resistor and pick an actual real resistor, which has got you know a power level and a tolerance. We're not so bothered about that for what we're doing today. So we'll just set this at 10 ohms. So now I have the two components I want in my circuit, but there's no wires joining them together. So to add wires, we click this pencil icon. And then we just simply draw our wires between the two points on the components we want to connect together. So now I have a complete circuit. And you should know from Ohm's law, if we've got 10 ohms and 10 volts, we'll have one amp flowing around this circuit. 
But if I was to run this simulation now, it will crash. And the reason it will crash is because there's no reference node. So in every SPICE circuit you ever make, you need to add that ground terminal. And that tells SPICE from which point you're going to reference all your voltages. So if I put my voltage probe here, which we'll do in a moment, we should measure 10 volts with respect to this point. If we had 50 other resistors here in a different series parallel combination, if we click at any point on those complicated circuit, it will tell us the voltage relative to this point. So to run a simulation, we need to click this little picture of a person running. But when we do it for the first time, it will bring up a dialog box where we can enter some simulation parameters. So I've clicked it and there's lots of different types of analysis we can do. And I'm only going to talk about transient analysis for now. So transient analysis, as the name implies, is, is you know, looking at how the values, so the current and voltage in a circuit change with time. So this is a DC circuit, so we're not expecting any change in time. So our waveforms, what we'll see as a result of the simulation will just be straight lines. So the first parameter and the only one we really need to worry about is our stop time. This tells the, the computer when to stop simulating. So, you know, we could put one millisecond, we could put 10 seconds. It doesn't really matter for this case. So let's just leave it at 10 seconds. So I've simply put 10 there. It automatically assumes the unit seconds. If I want to put a different unit, I can put like 10 new for micro or 10 M for 10 milli or 10 N for 10 nano. So we've got a 10 second simulation. And as soon as I click OK, the simulation runs and you can see it's brought up. This is going to be a graph, but there's no Y axis yet because we haven't clicked on the circuit. But if you look at the X axis, it's in, it's in seconds. So it goes from zero to 10. Now, when I hover over my circuit, you can see that the little symbol from the mouse changes. It looks now like a voltage probe. So as soon as I click on that wire, it will tell me the voltage on this wire with respect to this ground terminal. So obviously we've got a 10 volt source here. I'm looking at the voltage here and we've got 10 volts. We can see here it's 10 volts. You have to be a little careful because this axis auto scales. So if you look, here's 10 volts, but there's only 10.008 and 9.99. So it's, it's auto scaled to that. We can also look at the current flowing around this loop. Now to look at the current, we hover over our resistor because current flows through components. And you can see now the icons changed again to look like a current probe. So when I click this, we get, if we look at the Y axis on the right hand side of the plot now, we can see we've got an amp scale and it's at one amp exactly as we predicted. Unfortunately, the line has overlaid onto the voltage. So we can't see the two lines individually. We could, we could fix that by manipulating the scale. Um, so if I make my top 1.1 amp and uh, my bottom, I don't know, 9.09, let's just say, then it will split the two lines apart. It hasn't changed the value. It's still on one amp and 10 volts. It's just changed the graph. And you can export these to Excel or something like that to plot those waveforms. So that's the simplest possible um, circuit we could simulate in SPICE. Let's just modify that now. Let's So we click back here. So now this window is active again and we'll add some more components. Let's add a, a parallel resistor. I'm going to press Control R now to rotate and rotate back. So now we've got some more resistors. I'm going to join them up. So I've joined them up, but if I click my simulate button now, there's going to be an issue because I haven't assigned a value to those resistors. So look, it's thrown up an error. Can't find the definition of model R. So that's because it doesn't know what the resistance is. So if I right click, let's pick some random values. So we can put 1K there if it's a 1000. We could put one capital M for one mega and we could put a small M for one milli. So let's just make it another 1K resistor. So now when I run this simulation, it's still telling me the voltage at this point because that's where I left my probe. Whereas if I click here now, you can see the voltage at this point is five volts. Well, of course it is because we know we've got 10 volts on this wire and this is a potential divider. They've got equal values. So it gives me five volts. And if I put my current probe on, 
now we have to be really careful. So if you look at the current probe now, I'm going to waggle it around a little bit so you can see. You can see it's got a red arrow and that is the direction of current flow that's been measured. So we know if there's plus 5 volts at this point, current is going to flow from positive to negative, so down to zero. So the current flow is actually going to be going from top to bottom of that resistor. Whereas if we look on our current scale now, let me just double click so it's the only scale we see. Um, you can see it's saying minus 5 amps. And the reason it's saying minus 5 amps is because the little red arrow now hovering over the resistor is pointing upwards. So as we know, minus 5 amps going up, minus 5 milliamps going upwards is exactly the same as plus 5 milliamps going downwards. So it's still the right answer. You've just got to pay real attention to this. So now I've gone to resistor R2 in our circuit and we can see the little red arrow is pointing downwards. So we know on this wire here we've got plus 10 volts. So current is going to flow from plus 10 volts down to zero and Ohm's law tells us the voltage, the current's going to be 10 volts divided by 100. So that gives us 100 milliamps. Let's change this circuit up now. And let's make it a lot more interesting, let's say. Let's go to advanced and turn that DC voltage source into an AC voltage source. So I've clicked sinusoidal. We'll have no DC offset. We'll have an amplitude of 5 volts, say. And we'll have a frequency of, let's say, 50 hertz. Those are the only parameters we need. So now when I run this, the screen, the, the graph, is going to look completely crazy. So I'll run it. Look, you can't really get any information for that. You could zoom in and you can see the, the, the time. But what we need to do really is reduce our simulation time. So I'll close that. I'll right click here. And I'll say we'll run for half a second. So we should see around 25 periods of that sine wave. So I'll run it now, put my voltage probe back on, and there should be approximately 25 there. We're working at 50 hertz, so that means 50 cycles per second. So if we're only looking for half a second, we should only see 25 cycles. So again, we get exactly the same result. If I click here now, we'll see that sine wave basically divided by 2. And again, we can double click there and we're just looking at the current. And of course, we're applying a sinusoidal voltage so we can see a sinusoidal current. And this will be really important when we're looking at AC circuits. So briefly, just to remove this circuit, you can either just close it down and start a new schematic. Or you can go to Edit, click Delete, and just delete these resistors and wires. It's worth noting though that nothing here is going to change until you re-click the, the little running person button. So that runs the simulation again. We put our voltage probe back on and we're back to our original sort of sine wave across our 10 ohm resistor. So again, we've got five volts across this resistor peak. So we should have a current of five milliamps peak when we click here and we can see we do 500 milliamps. And that's it. It's really as simple as that. If you look in the component library, you can see that there's a vast amount of different devices. So if you wanted to simulate, for example, a transistor, you can click NPN, pop that there. And if you right click on this device and say, pick a new transistor, you know, there's a big list of different transistors that you can physically buy, go out and buy. And they've got the, the actual real parameters of those specific devices. So you could simulate a realistic device. And in some of these directories here, there's some really complicated, you know, components that one can simulate. Um, example, lecture 10 DC circuits looks at op amps. So here we could just take a, a simple op amp. And that looks like a simple op amp. And there you can see we've got the inverting, non-inverting terminals, the output, and also some power terminals that you need to connect. So if we wanted to connect that up, we'd have to obviously go like that, that would power the positive. We could just ground that. We'd need some inputs, we'd need some outputs. So if you run the simulation now, you, you still runs, but you, you kind of just get nonsense results out. You know, they're not properly connected up. So there's, there should be no volts here. It's just some simulation noise. And if you look here, I've just clicked on this transistor, even though it's not connected to anything, and the current's in femtoamps. So that's an extremely low current. 
So basically, this is just simulation noise. So that's it. You can practically simulate most electrical circuits in LT Spice or any other version of Spice. They all follow the same principle. You basically draw the circuit diagram and then you run a simulation. Sometimes it actually looks like an oscilloscope here. So there's there's lots of different versions you can use. So just to summarize, we've learned how to use LT Spice for the simulation of a simple DC circuit. Um, as I already mentioned, Spice is an extremely powerful piece of software and it can simulate all kinds of different waveforms and parameters. So if you'd learn, like to learn more about these advanced features, please let me know in the comments. In the next video in this little section of that I'm calling Extras, um, it's how we can use a benchtop DC power supply to um, test a, a simple electrical circuit. So like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.